cold or something. Oh, okay. Good morning to those whom I am looking at and to those who are online. We welcome you to these worship services during this season of Advent. And on this morning, we know that so far, two candles are already burning. During this season of Advent, we have another person who is going to light the third candle in our Advent wreath this morning, and he is Brother Anthony Davidson. So at this time, as we begin these worship services, let us hear now from Brother Anthony Davidson, who will light the third candle in the Advent wreath. Good morning, second. Good morning. <laughs> On this third Sunday in Advent, we will lift our voices together in a loud chorus praise and of joy, joy of promise, coming of the Christ child into our world. Joy for the hope and faith and love which we receive because of his womb coming. We join who in an unborn infant in his mother's womb, leap for joy in the presence of Christ in anticipation that God's new day was ready to burst forth upon the face of the earth. Even infants and children knew that your promise can never fail. So now today, December the 12th, our hearts and as well ought leap for joy at the promise of a Emmanuel coming. Let us pray. Help us, O oh God, Father of the long expecting Jesus, to rejoice and be glad for Emmanuel. Come into the world through the doorways of our hearts. Let those doors swing wide, then in love, thanksgiving, faith, and joy as we await his second advent. Thank you. Good morning, second. We welcome you all to uh, Second Baptist Church this morning. We thank you just for calling it a place.
pleasure and a time to come this morning to visit with us. I say visit because we are all Second Baptist members and some that are here that are visiting and some that are on uh, Zoom. You could have been any other place, but you chose to be here. And for such a time as this, we thank you. And now, let us just uh, pray. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you once again for allowing us an opportunity to once again come into your presence, to once again as individuals come collectively to worship you. Oh God, we thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, the God of our provide, the God our provider. And we would ask, oh God, that you would allow us now to empty out our minds and let them be centrally focused on you. Because it's because of you and only because of you that we are here. We ask that we would see nothing else but you this morning as we collectively come to worship you. To worship you as first and last, as the beginning and the end and everything in between. We worship you as provider. We worship you as our keeper. We worship you as our guider. We worship you as he who has unstopped our ears and allowed us to hear you when you called. And in your calling, Father, we worship you that you gave us that intestinal fortitude that we might even answer that call. It's a privilege and an honor, a privilege and an honor to know who you are, to know how you move and operate to be able to hear you, to be able to feel you, to be able to understand that you are ordering our steps. And now, oh God, we would pray this morning that you would teach us to war. Teach us to war by way of the spirit. Teach us to war in our homes. Teach us to war in the streets and the highways and byways on our jobs, oh God. Through our families, oh God, that we might open our mouths and proclaim the goodness, the good news that you are, are our king. We thank you for every heart that's represented here today. And we would ask in Jesus' name that as we collectively worship you, keeping our minds centered and focused on you, that you would accept us, accept us as we are, and teach us to walk more closely in your word, in your laws, and through your precepts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. By thy tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. We thank God for Reverend Pennington's prayer. And as he has already done our invocation, we will now move to our responsive reading, God the Omniscient. Excuse me, God the Omnipresent, number 548, 548. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. It is really good to see you in the house of the Lord this Sunday. As we turn to the responsive reading, I'll ask that you make a check on your cell phones to make sure that they are behaved in the sanctuary. The responsive reading this morning is number 548, God the Omnipresent. It is taken from the book of Psalms, the 139th division, verses 1 through 14, and then skipping to verses 23 
and 24. Let us read responsively. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all ways. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts all together. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Well, but I'll 
call him sweet Jesus boy Help call him Jesus wonderful counselor everlasting father he brings a peace. Say Emmanuel, but I need Jesus more. I'll call. Praise God. Mary had a baby. Amen. God is good. At this time, we will prepare for our call to the altar. This is a time for us to bring to God the petitions of our heart. Let us stand. I know that we're living in a time where the devil is busy and the devil is active. I know that in these days, there's so much to discourage us and cause us to struggle. But I want you to know that the God that we serve is a God that not only is a God of encouragement, but our God is a God of deliverance. And for whatever it is that you may be going through or you may be suffering, God is with you. Let us pray. Oh, God in heaven, we come now and we pray, dear Lord, because there is so much, there are so many burdens of life, dear Lord. Uh, dear Lord, we as your children, we're grateful for you, God. But we know that the devil also has his children, dear Lord. And dear Lord, the devil's children, they love to create mischief, dear Lord. They're busy, busy bodies, dear Lord. They love to try to discourage us, dear Lord. They love to try to beat us down, dear Lord. But we pray at this time, oh God, that you will build a hedge of protection around us, dear Lord. And bring your wrath down upon those, dear Lord, who seek, dear Lord, to injure your servants and your saints, dear Lord. Dear Lord, in this time of COVID and pandemic, dear Lord, illness, dear Lord, is across the land, dear Lord. And we would think that with all the illness and all the death and the mass graveyards and the burnings of coffins that we've seen, dear Lord, 
that folks will say, now is the time to get my life right. Dear Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that you will protect us from COVID. But we also pray, dear Lord, that for the unbeliever, dear Lord, or maybe for a person that's sitting in a pew somewhere in the world right now, dear Lord, who is with you in tongue but not in heart, that they will use the signs of the time to push them towards a repentance, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we come now and we ask you to bless us financially, oh God. We ask you to bless our financial resources, to protect our emotional health, to protect our uh, mental health, dear Lord, to protect our relatives, our grandparents, our grandmothers, grandfathers, our daughters, our sons, our spouses, our cousins, dear Lord, so many folks who we care about, dear Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that you look after us, dear God, because we don't know what comes tomorrow, dear Lord. We we turn on the news and we see how some states in the Midwest were just torn apart by tornadoes that just dropped out of the sky, just came nowhere. And at least 70 some people have lost their lives, dear Lord, and countless others have lost property, have lost homes, dear Lord. It's just at a snap of a finger how much things can change, dear Lord. And I pray, dear Lord, that with the fragility of life, that it will cause us to break down on our knees, oh God, and admit that you are the Alpha and the Omega, and to serve you faithfully and obediently, dear Lord. Because although this world may throw things at us sometimes, dear Lord, you are the great catcher to protect us from harm. You are the great you are the great reconciler, dear Lord. You are the, the great repairer, dear Lord. You are the great replenisher, dear Lord. And so we want to obey you. We come here before your altar today, dear Lord, in humility. We know that just by our own works that we are not worthy to stand here at your altar. But it is by the work of your son, Jesus Christ, and the blood that was shed from him that enables us to boldly approach your altar and to lay the petitions of our heart at your feet. We love you so much, dear Lord. And hear our prayers at this time. If you have a prayer request, I ask you from your seat to please put it in the atmosphere. To say whatever it is you want the Lord to hear from you. And then I will go back to God in collective prayer on your behalf. Let us bow. Dear Lord, we have called out names of people who mean a lot to us. We've called out names of institutions and organizations, dear Lord, and we ask you to bless them, dear Lord. For the for the family that's grieving the loss of a loved one, dear Lord, we ask you to give them hope, dear Lord. We ask you to, to whisper in their ear that it's going to be all right and that you're with them. Dear Lord, for the person that has a loved one that's in the hospital or that's sick at home, dear Lord, we ask you to heal that person, oh God. For the person that's coming here with financial issues, financial struggles, dear Lord, we ask you to help them to make their ends meet and help uh, to increase their territory, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for the individuals who called out for their church home, dear Lord. We ask you to bless Second Baptist, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, to grow, dear Lord, to grow spiritually, dear Lord, to grow deeper and closer to you, dear Lord. And by doing so, dear Lord, help us to have the byproduct of that, which is to grow numerically. Dear Lord, we come now on behalf of the person whose prayer I might not have been able to touch generally right now. But you know, dear Lord, you know what this person needs. You heard that prayer request that was put out in the atmosphere, dear Lord. And we pray uh, that you will answer the prayer that was said to you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all of these things. Amen. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Amen.
and when yes Lord can take anything to God in prayer. There is no prayer too big or too small that God will not answer. And God is eager and ready to hear our prayer. We refuse to tempt or snare, but instead we go to God in prayer. You may now be seated. God bless you, church. May God bless the prayers that we have offered to God at this time. We will now be led in our scripture reading from Isaiah 53, 3 through 5. Our first scripture this morning will be read out of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5. I would ask that you would either get a Bible that is in the pew, the one you've brought, or your mobile app. And join with us as I read Isaiah 53, starting verse 3 through 5, out of the King James Version. And if you would like, you can stand for the reading of God's word. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his most holy word. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, what a glorious Sunday morning. Pastor Rogers, Reverend Dr. Beeman, Reverend Pennington, my esteemed church family, friends and special guests, and those that are watching this awesome service today. I bring to you the announcements on December the 12th, 2021. Last Sunday, I spoke about the historical committee's interest in creating a time camp capsule for second. Well, upon further investigation, it was learned that second already has created two time capsules, one under Pastor A.A. A. Banks and the second one under Pastor Terman's tenure. So keep your ideas and suggestions coming for the creation of our next time capsule the final date for collecting of your ideas and suggestions will be January the 30th, 2022. This is the last Sunday that we will be collecting special offerings for our church staff. So please show your appreciation for all of their efforts. Thank you so much for your donations and gifts. 
And finally, you know what's coming. All right. Family, friends, and Ken Outreach Fellowship. We have an array of wonderful prizes donated by our church family. We have board games. We have snacks. And yes, we have the return of our banana deacon. Remember those bananas? We have them. We have word puzzles, puzzles, and more puzzles. And we are introducing today Uno. We have coloring pages for our therapy for all ages. It promises to be a grand time this afternoon. So come on down to the fellowship hall and let's praise our Lord through fun-filled Christian fellowship. And finally, my parting remarks, come on, let us praise him. Let's adore him. Let's thank him and serve him. For the Lord is good all the time. And all the time, he is good. So let us use our treasures, our gifts, our talents that God has so richly blessed us with. I thank you. Do come again. We love to have you. Everyone is welcome here at Second Baptist Church in downtown Praise the Lord. I want to first off begin by thanking the uh, wonderful play folks uh, who put on the play this morning. Let's clap for them. The play was so fantastic. That play was very encouraging and motivating and truly inspiring. I have a few announcements I would like to uh, commit to you today. The first is, is that this week I am going to take a much needed break. I'll be taking some time off this week, uh, barring no emergencies. If there's something that you need, uh, feel free to contact the church office or Reverend Beeman or Reverend Pennington or one of the deacons. I will be taking some time off to catch up on some much needed things. We do have two announcements in the way of bereavement. Uh, we have uh, for their final arrangements for Edward Charles Leonard will be Tuesday, December 14th, 2021, here at Second Baptist Family Hours at 1030 a.m. and services are, are at 1130 a.m. Visitation will be Monday, December the 13th from, from 1 to 9 p.m. at James Cone Funeral Home located at 2624 West Grand Boulevard. We want to just pray for the Leonard family and pray for the Kenny family in the time of their bereavement. We also would like to make you aware of the passing of Florence Patterson, the mother of Kimberly Stewart, sister-in-law of the late Lola Barber. On Friday, December 17th at 9.30 a.m. will be family hour, and at 10 a.m. will be the service at Kemp Funeral Home, located at 24585 Evergreen Road, Southfield, Michigan, 48. 075. These are your announcements for today, my dear family. We will now be led in our prayer for offerings in our doxology by Reverend, no, by, by Deacon Stinnett. Thank you. It's time to give to the Lord, which is a joyous time, especially in this time of the year. And as the ushers are making their way to give you that opportunity, remember this. Whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's found in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 1 through 
verses 6 through 8. So we would ask that you would prayerfully consider your gifts, both general and benevolent. Our benevolent offerings do much to help people who darken the doors of Second Baptist Church in need. You would probably be surprised to, if you knew how many people that involves. So we thank God for the opportunity to give righteously today. We have several platforms to give. If you aren't aware of them, you can visit our website, secondbaptistdetroit.org backslash donate. You can use PayPal, credit card or a debit card. If you use cash app, it's dollar second Detroit. All one word, if you will, dollar sign second Detroit. You can download the Givelify app to your phone and simply search Second Baptist Church of Detroit or do so on your computer. Go to givelify.com. Of course, you can use the U.S. mail service. Send your check or money order to 441 Monroe here in Detroit, 48226. You can set up donations through your financial institution's bill pay feature. You can set up recurring gifts. And of course, we thank you for your obedience to God and the act of giving. And thank you for supporting Second Baptist so that our work and his kingdom may continue. As you can't be God given, no matter how hard you try. Can be God giving, no matter how you try. As you are living in the Lord is in heaven on high. The more he gives to you, just keep on giving because it's really true that you can be God giving no matter how you try. Stand for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise God the Son and Holy Ghost. Lord, you have given us so much already. The gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, who went to Calvary's cross and paid our sin debt, past, present, and future. The greatest gift that could ever be given to us, Lord. And because of the shedding of his blood on our behalf, Lord, we who have accepted that gift are no longer our own. We now belong to you as your blood bought possession. And Lord, all that we own and all that we are are now yours. We ask that you would move in our hearts and our minds, that we would give cheerfully of ourselves and of our treasure, that we would promote your kingdom, Lord, so that there's a faithful and evangelical ministry amongst us, that the poor are relieved, and that the good news of the gospel is spread throughout the world. 
And yes, Lord, that the ultimate thing that we would give is ourselves as living sacrifices to the glory of God the Father. We ask it in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. When you're lonely and your heart is filled with despair, remember God cares for you. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, remember He'll see you through. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Just call. When you're lonely and your heart is filled with despair, remember God cares. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, remember he'll see you through. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Just call. Just call oh, Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus, call him, Jesus, call him, Jesus, 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 Let's have a little fun. One more time. One more time. Oh, oh, how precious. He'll be there every time you call. Oh, how precious. He'll be there every time you fall. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You can feel free to stand up on your feet. Call his name, it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. Call him, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh how precious. Right. The one we were just singing about Jesus, we're now going to find that he, the word, became flesh. So won't you take your Bibles, turn to the gospel according to St. John, and we will be reading verses 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Won't you please stand in honor of the Lord God's word. So I'll put in my glasses with my help. All right. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by God, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came as a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. May God bless the reading of this gospel of John, amen.
Beautiful. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us with this day. And we pray to the Lord that this word is well received, O Lord. I ask you to purify me, dear Lord, as your manservant, to help me be able to preach this word, the Lord, in an unadulterated way that will bless the hearers, dear Lord, of what you would have them to know and to understand. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all of these things. Amen. You know, before I begin my sermon today, I just want to, I want to thank God for the past, the past, there's so many blessings for us in the past. In a few months, we'll have um, Black History Month, believe it or not, it's kind of hard to believe, but there's two months, we'll be in February, and we'll look at the past, and I thank God for the past, and I also thank God for the present. And I realized that God has called me to Second Baptist to lead us into the future. And I'm here to serve alongside people who want to bring Second Baptist into the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to bring Second into the future, can you clap with me right now? I don't want you to misunderstand Clapping does not mean you dishonor the past. Clapping means that you care about our forebearers' work so much that you want to bring the mission to the future. Wow, our, our music and arts ministry, wow, beautiful. Thank you for lifting us up. Sister Kenny, my Lord. <laughs> How much time did you spend in Mississippi? How much time did you spend in Mississippi? I can tell. I can tell she's been down in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. This is wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful. It's such an encouraging Sunday. Uh, a choir with the children and our play. And today I hope you can be encouraged again by the word. The word will be coming from John 1. And I'm going to read this again. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own. His own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. I want you to know today, my dear family, that you matter. And that you don't have to have a haughty position to matter. You don't need a bunch of degrees to matter. You don't need a bunch of money to matter. You matter to God so much that God sent his son, his one and only begotten son, to die for you on the cruel cross of Calvary. You matter. It doesn't matter if you have a bunch of degrees, if you got a bunch of money, if you got a bunch of titles, if you got a bunch of certificates, if you got a bunch of accolades, none of that matters to God. You matter to God even without that. Yeah. It's interesting that all throughout society, people continue to try to set up caste systems, ways to say that you matter a little less than someone else. When you go fly, maybe it's first class, they got comfort class, they got economy plus, they got the A group, the B group, the C group. I found myself in the D group. 
people walk past and look look down on me because I'm in the D group. Maybe it's the members only line at your favorite shopping center. Maybe it's the rewards member line at the movie theater. If you we ain't been to movies in a long time because of COVID, but if you remember right before COVID, they had one line for people who just had regular tickets and they had another line for preferred members, preferred members who got got little extras, got a little got in the theater a little faster. Okay. We, you, at school, you have honors classes, you got college prep classes, and you got the you got the regular class. On a job, you got corporate execs, you got district managers, you got managers, supervisors, and regular employees. Even in the church, people say that this person is important because they are older, or because they have a title, or because they have given a lot, or whatever. And this person isn't because they are younger, or because they haven't been around as long, or because they have no special title, or they're too poor to give a lot. Everywhere we look, we see humans trying to set up high places for themselves, ranking systems, ranking orders. And some other foolishness, and 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 the foolish enough, they put value on it, put value and find their own value in this, and they believe that because they're sitting in first class, some people, not all, but they some believe because they're sitting in first class, and I'm sitting in the coach, that they are better than me, that they are better than you, but that is not true. In this Advent season, I think it's important for us to remember the humility that we see in Christ. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Yes, folks love to set up for themselves high places. But in Jesus, we have one who came from the high place and went to the low place. And Philippians says, have the same mind in you. Many people in this world love to set up for themselves high places. And some people set up these high places for themselves so, no, so they can look down on others, so they can feel this feeling of superiority. Some folks use things like their wealth, their class, their gender, their race, their education in order to make for him or herself a high place. But my question for us today in this Advent season as we continue to march, march toward Christmas. My question for us today is can we come down from our high places in order to bless someone else? I think about society, I think about the wealth and the quality gap, the wealth equity gap as this has continued to grow and grow for the past eight years. Homelessness in many areas is becoming illegal where people can be arrested for sleeping in their cars or even on park benches. A recent study revealed that a person with an ethnic sounding name is far less likely to get a call back for a job interview than a person with an Anglo sounding name. Another study has revealed that blacks are more likely to be punished with a write up on their job for the same offense as their white counterparts who are often just given a warning. There's a gender pay gap where men continue to make more money for the same job that women do. The problem with people trying to create high places isn't just black and white though, brothers and sisters. There are human problems, like how the poor are treated. And uh, sometimes we as black folks need to be careful when we talk about white races, that we aren't hypocrites. Because sometimes in our pursuit of high places, we can sit down in the seat of a white racist. We ourselves must not treat the black poor 
like white racists have treated us. Where we shun the poor, blame the poor, mistreat the poor. We have to be careful that we aren't hypocrites. We cannot practice colorism where we mistreat each other because of our various shades. If you're this shade, I like you, I give you preferential treatment, but if you're that shade, I don't. How are you any different from a white racist? We cannot practice colorism, but black is beautiful in all of its shades. We cannot practice ageism where we discriminate against people because they are old or even more common in the church because they are young. Let no one despise your youth is what Paul told young Timothy as he went to pastor the church in Ephesus. Let no one despise your youth, wrote to Paul to young Timothy. Over and over again, this scripture gives me encouragement. But we must not be like white racists that we talk about all the time by discriminating against our own young folks. Who else is there to lead them, to guide them, to mold them, to teach them, to protect them but us? I know that we're not silly enough to believe that a world that we say dislikes us and is cruel to us will protect our children. I know we're not silly enough to say that a world that's full of so much hatred towards us, we can fully trust to educate our children. But who else is there to do it but us, the body of believers, the saints, the church? We cannot practice ageism either. So everyone, despite race, has got to come down from their high places because we got some too, church. We got some too. We got, we got high places of class where we mistreat the poor. We got high places of colorism where we mistreat people based on the color, the shade of their skin. We got high places of ageism or harsh to older folks, older folks being harsh to younger folks. We got all sorts of high places and we got to come down from them too. God has given us a model to do this, to follow regarding coming down from perceived high places. Here in this text from John 1, 1 through 14, I really want to lay my hat on verse 14. It says, and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we've seen his glory, the glory us of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is something that is hard to really wrap our minds around. Think about the neighborhood that you might not want to move to. Think about a community that you might feel uncomfortable driving to. That feeling that you have does not come close at all to what Jesus Christ did. Jesus being divine said, I'm going to leave the comfort of my father's house and come to a place that is full of violence, that is full of hatred, that is full of trauma and pain. And I'm going to love them and I'm going to teach them. I'm going to walk with them, even to the point of death on the cross, it is hard to imagine the level of humility it takes for the word to become flesh. Unlike the high places that we create for ourselves, God is truly the one that holds the true high place. 
God is truly the one who should be exalted and should be lifted up. However, Christ did not count it as inequality to empty himself and come to earth in the form of a human. Christ did not count it as robbery, but he did it gladly. He gladly did it. He gladly did it. The word did not become the word did not just become flesh, but it became the most vulnerable kind of flesh. He came as a baby. He was not born to a wealthy family, but a poor one, a family on the run, a family that was oppressed. Rapper Drake had a song. He said he started from the bottom. Now we're here. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Here meaning at the top. But that is not what the word did. The word started from the top and went to the bottom. And I, I think about that as I as we were as we were uh, as we were preparing this morning for the play. Uh, something went wrong with the microphones, and so I was running all over the place, sweating profusely trying to get the microphone set up. You see, you got to understand that I, I grew up in, in country churches, okay? And in these type of churches, everybody works. You might see the preacher cutting the grass, okay? You might see somebody else fixing the trim, the bushes. You might see one of the deacons unclogging the toilet. This is how I came up. See, in my mind, the way I came up, everybody is a servant. See, it makes no sense to me when I, I, you know, you know, you go to church and not really country church. Maybe it's a little, a, a little more hardy tardy, you know, somewhere else. Not here, not this church, but maybe another church. And and you're working with it, and you ask somebody, hey, you know, can you help us drive the van to pick up elderly people? And they say, I'm too good for that. Or you say, can you volunteer to help us uh, to teach the youth? And they say, well, I'm too good for that. Or they say, well, hey, you know, we need somebody to help us move this. Can you help us? And I'm too good. For it. I just don't understand because in my mind, the word became flesh. And if Jesus Christ, if the Christ can empty himself and come to earth in the form of the man, the least I can do, although I hold the title of pastor, senior pastor and all of this, the least I can do is help the church to put together some microphones so that people can hear the play. Because the word became flesh and lived among us. In the original language, what this means is that the word pitched his tent among us. The word tabernacled with us. It's supposed to remind us of the tabernacle. That the word became flesh and lived among us. When you pitch your tent, it means that you're there to be with the people. But I want to stop for a moment and just discuss who the word lived around. Who did the word live among? The word lived among, amongst the lepers. The lepers who were outcasts due to health. And these lepers had stigma. They were stigmatized and they had to be put in, they had to be segregated from everybody else and they lived in colonies. They lived in, in like ghettos. And, and when you would walk past a person with leper, leprosy, they were supposed to cry out, I am unclean, I am unclean, I am unclean. They had to cry that out and they lived with this stigma. And when you got leprosy, it really changed your whole life. And, you know, it was really a skin condition. It wasn't leprosy as we think of it today. It was, But when you got this, it really changed your whole life around because the reason why it changed your life was because, because you were now just considered unclean and meant that you couldn't be around your family anymore. You couldn't be around your loved ones anymore. It means that you were detached from your family. You had children, your spouse, you were detached from. And now you had to go live with other lepers. And you lived in poverty because you weren't able to make money. You weren't able to bring in money. And the reason why you weren't able to bring in money is because you were unclean. So you couldn't do business with people. So when Jesus says, I'm going to go 
and work with the lepers. I'm going to go teach the lepers. You see, that's why the disciples are nervous. Because in the disciples' mind, they're thinking they're going to make me unclean. And if I'm unclean, I'm going to have to live like them. And I don't want to live like them. But Jesus says, we're going to go and minister to the lepers. Do you hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? So I'm not, I, listen, I'm not trying to talk to anybody right now who has health conditions. I'm not trying to point the finger at anybody. If you got health conditions, you know your situation is, okay? But I, but I want to make one statement for us. That in COVID, we need people willing to follow Jesus to work with us. Thomas.